Can you see us on the screen? It says you're live. <laughs> Did you had you figured out why we can see ourselves on the screen last night during our live call in show? Yeah, you had the wrong camera selected on the camera switchboard. No, we didn't because that was the camera that was showing the viewers could see it. No, this on the switchboard that doesn't that shows what you see. Well, look, you should have been here, Blake. I asked you, do you need me to be there? No, huh? we need him here, don't we, Chili? I've always said that. It was a disaster. It was a bloodbath, man. <laughs> that live call-in show was a bloodbath. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa Chili. Whoa. You, you tried cables and stuff strolled all out under there? Yeah. Who's who's me? Yeah, you we had that's your seat. I didn't do that. You're the tech guy. You I set everything up. Not yesterday. I did that. I did that. Yeah, he, we he need the... you here, but we need you here to do your dang job. Well, I can't. If y'all don't tell me, hey, don't come, then... You know, I just do what I'm Look, told. Next time we tell you don't come, Blake, just understand we're just trying to be nice. Yeah, <laughs> you really need to come. We're we're just telling you not to come in because we're just trying to be nice, man. Look, nobody needs to be nice to me. Need to tell me, you know, what I need to do. I, well, I don't think for myself. Hey, we're worried about you, Bubba. You just went home and watched Rambo. Cooked a steak and fixed a gutter. <laughs> yeah, okay. we're worried about you, Bubba. Jeez. Trying to, you know, we're trying to give you a little time off to, you know, get yourself healthy. But well, just I'm because feeling better, just because we're trying to give you time off, doesn't mean you should take it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you ain't been working out. No. Bad for you. Exactly. Yeah. What does that tell you? You've been feeling better when you stop working out. Yeah. He yeah. worked out this morning, walked me plumb to the top of that daggone mountain up there to try to hear a darn turkey that I couldn't even hear. He would, Chad didn't want to go further than the orchard. That mountain couldn't have been too far because I mean, how long was we standing outside before Chad opened the door? Oh, they, 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 they for 30 minutes, they, uh, they, yeah. they piddled around in that Look, field and walked back to the house. Y'all went and got in the, truck yeah y'all just rode around y'all didn't even y'all just but as soon as we left i thought i heard the truck fire up y'all just went and rode around that's how fast i find the gobblers no that's i don't even how, think y'all heard one i knew y'all was gonna be mad when we <laughs> won team pt do you think they even heard anything yeah they did i'm sure they did i heard that joker screeching but the all, although <laughs> although that was corn's owl hoot, you, not turkey. <laughs> you never know about cornbread oh, because when he gets in this turkey hunting mode, I mean, every sound he hears, he thinks it's a turkey. Well, that's true. He gets so keyed <laughs> up, man. It's like everything he, he could he could hear a daggone Tweety bird up there, and he, you we know, was hunting one time, and he kept saying, "There he went again." Did you hear him? I say, "No." Nah. He said, "It's getting closer." And there was a dung beetle rolling some dung <laughs> up the trail, and he could hear that dung every time it rolled over. And the vibrations of that, he was so keyed up. I thought it was a turkey drumming, didn't he? That's why that's why G is so nervous. He's been watching <laughs> you, man. Yeah, you gotta you gotta watch corn out there. Well, this morning was uh cornbread called the team PT this morning. Turkey hunting scouting trip. So it was probably the most lame version of a team PT we've ever done. Well, because y'all didn't oh, put man. no P into y'all's y'all just walked out there to the to the driveway and then y'all turn around and walk back me and chili went on a dang hike well we went on the hard side of the property there ain't no hills over there where y'all were at y'all drove the truck <laughs> we went you drove we went, the truck we went from the the seance spot all the way over the next loop right there, and we couldn't go no further you because drove we the found truck. the gobbler like we was in his vicinity how many did y'all hear i think it was all the same one well you mean all morning or that whole yeah all morning was the same bird yeah, i think it was the same one <laughs> what <laughs> yeah you think it was the same turkey yeah it was the same one yeah. no nah. yeah it was <laughs> no yeah when we got, when all... we got to the end of that dead end trail that was the same bird as the first one that was the same one no nah. yeah it was <laughs> no. Come on, man. It was the same one. There's no way. I, I can di distinctively count the cadence of a certain gobbler's gobble and tell if it's him all season long. There's no way. Yeah. Is well, that the first time you ever heard a turkey gobble chili in the woods like that? 
It was the first time I ever heard one, like when we crested that hill, and yeah. he was not, but 60, 60 yards. yards from us, and Daggum screeched. Dang, Yeah, man. first time ever like that. That's what we put into our PT this morning. The right <laughs> side of the road PT was serious. It's such a unique sound. Yeah, it's it such is. a unique sound that that bird makes. Yeah. It's really just the tone. It's just something about the tone of it, you know? Yeah. The only one I heard gobble Blake claims he heard a few way off, but the only one I heard was when we were doing the the gun PT over on the range. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Hey dang, that was close. Yeah, that was close. Yeah. Yeah. That was close. That was at like ten thirty. We were already done with our scouting trip. Me and See, all y'all quit too early. I I was still wanting to listen and I'm always say, oh, scout. We got you know, we gotta go do this. You can kill some birds midday. Yeah. If you get on a bird that's gobbling late in the morning like that or around the middle of the day, yeah. you, you can do some good with them. Yeah. yeah. I like hunting midday. Yeah. Me, me and Chili's done nicknamed ours. What's his nickname? Boo Radley. Boo Radley. Oh, boy. He'll move around and he, he darts behind trees and just, well, yeah, just screech at you. You, you can uh, never see him. <laughs> you think he's a mature bird? I'm not sure about that yet. I'll let you know about 7.30 Saturday morning. He ain't no Jake, though, is he? No, he definitely ain't no Jake. Uh -oh. You can't tell. Uh, <clears throat> you can tell by the gobble. The age, if they're, no, how you, mature they're not. You can't tell. You can't tell. By the gobble, no. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> you just ain't on that well, level Well, you can yet. tell by the go well, Jake's gobble. You can tell if gobble. it's a Jake or a gobble. Yeah, yeah. 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 But Jake's, some some turkeys got a long gobble. <clears throat> or deepen. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I've never paired the two with you know big turkey doing this or that right. gobble but it's just a gobble but a, and now sometimes a big tom will gobble like a jake yeah that's true that's Absolutely. weird isn't it? Mm -hmm. every now and then yeah they'll have beards too right what um like a jake? Won't, won't female turkeys some hens will have a beard no it's what rare. causes that it's rare Hermaphrodite. Well, some female <laughs> women have beards. What That's cause true. is that? That's true. That is true, man. When I lived in Virginia, uh, this lady lived right across the road from me when I lived in Suffolk. And I never would really see her much just now and then, but I never talked to her or nothing, which is weird because she was my neighbor. We never even met each other. But uh, huh, one day... Something was going on. And anyways, I had to go over there and knock on her door. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember what was happening, but I went over there and knocked on her door and she opened the door and she was talking to me. And the whole time she was talking to me, she was covering up her, her face and her mouth with her hand like this. That just lies. I swear, story. dude, I swear straight up. And I, I couldn't figure out why she was doing that. And we're sitting here having this conversation. Well, finally, we get done talking, and she kind of turns to go walk back in her house, you know. And this joker had um, a full-on, like, 5 o'clock shadow beard. Like, full-on, dude. Like, full facial beard. Mm. And I guess I just had caught her that morning, you know, before she had shaved her face and took care of her beard. But, uh, yeah, some women have beards. I mean, this I woman, know. this woman had a, I mean, she had a straight up, not just like a little bit of patchy hair on her face. She had a legit beard, man. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> pretty awesome. Yeah, man. She should just let it grow. I mean, don't be ashamed of that. I did. I seen a woman one time back when I was police and, and she had a long beard. I mean, like really, like three inches or so. Oh, that wasn't serpent foot, serpent foot, was it? No, uh, -uh. this lady lived down in Cave Spring, and we had a call out there at the apartments and got down there. And she was sitting on this old bucket, and she had an empty, uh, you know, ramen noodle sack coming that plastic kindly sack the noodles do, mm -hmm. and she had her bunch of rolled up cigarettes, and that's where she kept them was in that empty ramen noodle plastic sack, and she had her big old beard. Just hanging down, and she would. Well, she wasn't covering it up. She was telling me this is what the problem is, and why I need you here. And <laughs> you know what? What was going on down there, Blake? I think it was some sort of 
uh, domestic disturbance, domestic dispute. I mean, what a great, what time of night was this? <laughs> it was, it was of an evening about sunset. I mean, what a great life sitting on a bucket, a bearded lady sitting on a bucket in cave Springs with a bunch of, were her cigarettes like cigarette butts? No, they were rolled. You know how you roll your own? A bunch of hand-rolled cigarettes yeah. in a in a Raymond noodle bag. I mean, that lady, she ain't got a worry in the world, man. No. What's the chance that she don't play them dang-dang machines? <laughs> she don't do that, man. Bull crap, she does. She goes in there all the time. They I'll pay bet, her to play them because she got a beard. I'll bet that lady don't leave a 10 by 10 square of earth, man. <laughs> Tell you what, Cave Springs, people think that's just a nice little sweet town. That's got some of the roughest folks you ever met really? living down in Cave Springs. Really? Yeah. That's Floyd County? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that woman ain't got a worry in the world, man. She's probably down there today sitting on her bucket, glad it's warm outside. <laughs> I mean, what a life. They put that strawberry scroop deep, son. Yeah. Yeah, man, you're going to have to quit all that. We, we're about to have to get serious with this conversation. All I've been right? waiting on that to bother you. <laughs> yeah, it's just all right. It's been bothering me the whole freaking time, man. Trust me. Look, the fake little Virgil's on here. Oh, yeah. Before we get into anything, you know, to topical wise. Look, put that can of protein away, you freaking child. Hey, man, little Virgil, the real little Virgil. We love you. Now, the fake little Virgil called in last week. Now, <laughs> that, mm, we, we ought to reprimand you, but we ain't going to. Just consider that your warning. Now, if the fake little Virgil is still in the chat, we're going to ban you. You comment one more time, Blake's going to block you. That's all I got to say. Yeah, totally, Blake. <laughs> you can block people from that chat. If oh, the yeah. fake little Virgil comments... Block the freaking crap out of it. He's dude. already commented twice on here. Block, block him. Block him. This block him right -E now. B-E-R-G-I-L. That's the fake one, ain't it? Block him now. I'm sick of this crap, man. <laughs> freaking imposters, dude. Um, Yeah, Chili, you don't want to tick me off today, man. I, look, I've been working hard, brother. You ain't been doing jack squat. You're trying to get... You're trying to have phone calls with these tv people yeah trying to get me on a tv show yeah man uh look i mean we ain't got to talk about which one but like yeah i'm trying to get you on a tv show and you trying to fight it what's wrong with you man i don't understand i don't understand the purpose of tv because the the their Dude, the show would be fun well their network is not is i mean who watches freaking tv anymore dude like who who? I guarantee you that lady rolling her own cigarettes in Cave Spring watches this very show every night. How much you want to bet? Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. Maybe there are a bunch of people who still watch network television. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, look, you ain't been doing nothing, dude. I spent two days competing at the tactical games this past weekend. Rode my sorry butt plumb down to Florida to represent. Look, man, if you don't quit doing that. Look, I need to eat something. Well, eat that. Put it away. I eat it. I got to get what I need in there, man. He should have taken care of this before the show started, shouldn't he? Yeah, Blake. Chad just likes to be mad about something. You want that me to block him? Scoop? You yeah. want me to block triple him? Triple scoop? Yeah. Buzz off, man. Keep talking. Look, you're so... I'm the only You're look, so unadaptable it's unbelievable. I'm the only look, I'm the only one that freaking competes at anything anymore. I I dude, I gotta go down. I'm old well, as geez, crap. I hope it was 70 degrees and sunny down there, or else you wouldn't have been able to compete. Look, in Florida. Man, I'm old as crap. Everybody I'm look how old I am, dude. Washed up. Body's all busted up. Old as crap. And I gotta go down here. And just run myself through the mill to represent while you sit up in your stinking apartment all weekend and do nothing. <laughs> and now you want to come in here on the dang podcast and disturb it? It's really a mockery he's making of it. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Yeah. I'm eating lunch, man. You just drink that coffee. They run that coffee for you this time? No, my coffee's good. Oh. 
Well, I got word here from um, Sherry Palmer. She said that is the little, the real little Virgil with the E R G I L. She knows him. Yeah, the real little Virgil's in the chat, man. But there's a fake one. Well, you this one here is apparently not the fake. You one. don't know the real one. Well, there's two different spellings. I don't know which one's real and which one ain't, and you didn't either because you just said to block that one. I said block whoever was coming if, the, if it was the fake one. <laughs> you ought to be able to tell who the little Virgil is by oh, his yeah. comments. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a very distinctive way he comments. Yeah. So I can't tell. Yeah, he said credentials, double dipping, put some grease on it. That's, That's got to be him then. And then he said, please block me. <laughs> Yeah, don't block him. <laughs> That's got to be him, man. Uh, the fake little Virgil has a black profile picture. Real dark. What's yeah, this one got? Yeah, it's got like a little white thing in the middle. That's fake little Virgil. Sherry Palmer says it's a real one. Mm. So, yeah, I went down to the tactical games last weekend, did that deal. I know uh, I'm going to get into that, what that was all about. If you guys got any questions about them, about the this competition specifically, drop them in the chat. And uh, and I'll answer those for you here in just a little bit. Take note of that if you if you see it come up, tech guy. Do your freaking job, man. What? If you if you see any good questions come up, take note of it. All right. Do your freaking job. You well, know, I came back. I now now I've had a sore throat for two days. Um, what'd you get, dude? We went and filmed episode two of Paranormal Land Cruiser Experience yesterday. You guys uh, are going to, when you see that, look, what happened on episode one, I haven't talked about it publicly yet, but when you guys hear for the first time what actually went down on episode one, I think it's going to rock your world, all right? So episode two is being edited right now and it's probably going to change your entire perspective on what's actually going on so dang get ready for that man that's a bold statement it's it's big yeah it's big episode two is big we had to travel quite a distance to go talk to an expert about uh about what we experienced well and, you talked about it yeah because corn won't freaking talk about it yeah. So we did that yesterday. And uh, I'm glad to be home back on the podcast. What's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody listening? We appreciate you being here. And uh, speaking of the tactical games, here's a little here's a little thing that uh, if any of you guys are interested in doing one of these competitions or maybe you're a runner or maybe you're a surfer, I doubt it. I doubt we have many surfers that listen to this podcast. I ain't never met a surfer in my life. I, I've met a few. <laughs> Chris Reckliff used to do some surfing. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yep. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you're just a really fat person and you have rolls of fat flaps. You have fat flaps. And when you move, <laughs> you know, you get up to go to the freaking toilet or the refrigerator. And your fat flaps keep rubbing your skin raw. They get to flapping. Yeah. Then you probably are going to want to get you some of this stuff right here, all right? This is salty britches. If, you are, if you're moving around generating sweat, especially if it's dusty or sandy or salty, if your dad gone tired of getting blisters on your feet, if you're tired of your you know, chafing in, in between your legs because your thighs are too fat. Um, you know, if you're tired of chafing up under your arms because your wetsuit's rubbing you raw, you know, maybe you're out at the tactical games and, and your, your gear that you're wearing is kind of rubbing you in certain areas. And uh, chafing will really ruin your experience. You want to avoid chafing because once it starts, it makes your life miserable, and there ain't no way to stop it once it starts. So our friend Amy, the founder of Salty Britches, worked for years to develop this formula, and 
the way that I use this stuff is anytime I know I'm going to be out getting after it, I go ahead and put me a thin layer of salty britches on all the areas that I think might get a little hot spot, right? Get a little chaffage going. I go ahead and put a thin layer of this right up in between my legs, my old fat thighs, uh, all down through my groin. <laughs> Keep all that nice and lubed up. Put my dad, put a thin layer on my feet. And then I'm good to go, man. I ain't got to worry about it again. That's how I use it. Don't wait until you're you're already like, oh, wow, that's starting to hurt, and then try to put salty bridges on. Put it on before you start. It's going to make your experience wonderful, all right? Check them out at GetSaltyBritches.com. These are awesome people, and uh, let me go ahead and tell you, Amy's a really – really cool woman and she's done an amazing job at creating this product it's made in the usa a lot of you guys can appreciate that she doesn't have to make this in the usa it's a pain in the butt to have anything made in the usa it costs more money well she made it happen so get salty skin barrier ointment trust me you're not going to regret that decision. There's a lot of stuff out there. Salty Bridges works the best. I've used it all, man. I've been I've been trying to get I've been trying to get rid of chafing for pretty much the majority of my adult life. All right. And again, it works for you fats too with fat fold, uh fat flaps. So don't forget about that. I know we got I know we got some big fats watching this. <laughs> Tired of their fat flaps chafing. Damn. Look, <laughs> look! Don't let your fat flap chafe, man. Because if it chafes, that's liable to get infected. It's an open wound. Yeah, you know, we well, had it a, ain't real open. Look, man, we had a guy one. We had a we had a guy one time on the rock course that forgot to put his salty britches on. His his uh, groin. And all all of his groin and stuff was chafed real bad, like open, because he didn't use any preventative measures. Well, he gets, you know, three quarters of the way through the rop course. His freaking butt crack and, and groin's chafed so bad he can barely walk. Then he starts crapping his pants. And he's getting live crap all up in them open wounds. A live crap. Yeah, live cultured crap. Trying to get septic. Fresh, yeah. That'll mm. kill you, man. Oh, yeah. Without Salty britches will save your freaking life, dude. Yeah. You know, rub crap in your open wounds? <laughs> no, crap's supposed to stay in your butthole or in your toilet, one or the other. Oh. Not in an open <laughs> wound, all right? So, take this crap seriously, dude. I mean, literally, take hey. your crap seriously. I got bit by a tick the other day. And to dig it out, it made a big old sore, and my shirt kept aggravating it. I just put me old lather salty britches on there every mor morning, so my shirt wasn't rubbing against it. There you go, man. Do it all. Did that ever heal? It's almost completely healed up. <clears throat> Didn't um, you say you had a tick on you for three weeks one time? <laughs> when we went out there to Corpse Wood, yeah, that tick. Got on me. Of course, we just jacked him up bad, it man. And it buried in my side, and I woke up one night to use the restroom, and I thought it was a skin tag. Yeah, Corn, you already told this story on the podcast, <laughs> man. Yeah, Did I really? Yeah, but I you about already about told this story on the podcast. <laughs> Look, everything's just running together for you now. <laughs> it's turkey season, man. Well, that's true. Let's shut this jewel down. That is true. Oh, oh geez. Um... All right, yeah, so the tactical game. So why did I go out and do this competition? Well, I have to the, – the, the person who introduced it to me is a good friend of mine here in Rome. Uh, maybe we'll have him on the podcast one day, but he is an unbelievable athlete. He works out with me down here at the CrossFit gym. Not only is he an unbelievable athlete, but he is a very, very 
good shooter. He's real meticulous, um, and he really just uh, – this is his passion is, I, I would say, shooting and fitness. And he started talking to me about it maybe, I don't know, I guess close to a year ago, and he won the national championship last year at the Tactical Games. And he was talking about talking about it to me, telling me how challenging it is and uh, how great the people are and how fun the event is. And I'm like, okay, I'm interested because this dude that I'm talking about is legit, man. I mean, I work out with him on Saturdays and he just runs off and leaves me. And so when you got somebody like that, telling you, hey, man, this is a good event. It, it's hard. It's challenging. Uh, it, it piqued my interest um, because I respect this dude, right? And so he's the one that kind of told me about it. And what appealed to me is not only, not only his recommendation, but also the fact that it combines two things that I like to do and that I'm fairly decent at. I have a baseline kind of skill, both in shooting and in fitness. But I realize that if people like my friend are out there competing, I'm not going to be good enough to beat him because I can't beat him on an average Saturday. So that's another thing that really drew me to this is I said, okay, here's a new type of competition it combines two things that I enjoy doing, but I know I'm not going to be good enough to win. Now, somebody might say, well, then why would you go do it? Well, that's that's what appealed to me. The fact that I knew there was a guy like my buddy who was going to be out there who I, there's no way I'm going to beat this dude. Like, I'm just, it's going to take me a while to get to his level. And like that really gets me excited. It gets me excited to find something that I know I can, I, I'm going to have to work towards. You know, everybody asks about ultra running and this stuff. I still love to run, man. I still love to run. I still love to do that stuff. But I think that it's good for me personally, to get outside of this little, whatever whatever the box is that I've been in, to get outside of that box every few years and challenge myself in new, unique ways. And that's what, that's what really appealed to me about the tactical games. It's like, yeah, I'm, I've been so used to endurance sports well, here, let me go try this thing that's going to require me to lift heavy weights and um, and just challenge me on a whole different level so that now I have this new thing that I can really make improvements on and I can work towards for the next few years. And went out there, didn't know what to expect other than what my buddy had told me, but you know, I didn't know his, I didn't know his, what, what are his standards for a good event, right? So I went out there, didn't know what to expect, and uh, it turned out to be an amazing event. You know, the tactical crowd can sometimes not be the funnest bunch to be around. They can sometimes be a little uptight, sometimes be a little bit just geekish and maybe really ego-driven like me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that was not the case for the people out there at this event in Holt, Florida. I'm talking about, I, I bet, and I bet I talked to 200 people out there because we had a lot of, there were a lot of people competing there that watched the channel, that listened to the podcast. Um, and dude, it was so refreshing for me to be able to, like put a face to someone who watches or follows what we do and to say, man, this is a really cool dude. Like he's out here getting after it, man. 
This is a cool cat. We have a good conversation. You know, he's not a daggone douche. He's not a daggone dweeb. It's a cool cat. You know, I get a lot. I, I get in these stages sometimes. I told Chili yesterday, you know, you create things and put them out online. And uh, you see the way people respond and you're just like, why the crap am I even doing this? Like what, what, like you, you, you kind of, you, you look at the way some people respond and you're like, what is the quality of individual that I'm reaching here? Like it's very low. Like I, I, I'm literally speaking to a very, you know, low quality of human here. So why am I even doing this? Like, like some of the, like, I just can't freaking do anything to help this group of people. But, but what I realized being out of the tactical games is no, that's actually a very small percentage. Like the trolls, the freaking smooth brains, like that's a very small percentage of the people that we get to reach doing what we do. And most of the people that we are, you know, reaching most of the people that enjoy our content are dudes just like us like really cool cats that want to get better that want to improve that are working towards a goal that are competitive and so that was so refreshing to me man that was my favorite part of the whole event is getting getting to meet all of those people and like so many of them talking about Oh, you said this, it helped me. You said that, it helped me. I love the show. I love the content. Uh, that was my favorite part of the whole event. In terms of difficulty, it was it was hard, but it was deceptively hard because you you run multiple stages per day. Saturday, we ran five stages. Sunday, we ran three stages. Well, these stages are relatively short, eight to ten minutes. So really, you're only working about an hour per day, right? So you run a stage, you have a long break, and then you're up for the another stage, you know? So you have a long break. So you don't feel like you don't feel like you've done that much. But when you do, when you are up there competing, you're going as hard as you can for that eight to ten minutes. And you're lit. You're usually lifting something heavy, or climbing ropes, or doing something crazy, right? So you don't ever feel like, holy crap! Like I'm just, I'm grind. You don't get into that mode where you feel like you're grinding. But I think just the cumulative intense efforts over the course of two days, it snuck up on me, man. On Monday, when I got back home, I woke up Monday morning. Dude, I had bruises all over my body. It was crazy. <laughs> like, just from the, the gear and, and all, climbing over all the obstacles and all that crap. I didn't even realize any of that had happened. I, and I think another thing, when you're running the stage, your adrenaline is is pretty high, you know, because, you're again, it's max effort. So Monday morning, I was like, whoa, son. I am. I was sore, had bruises all over my body, was just tired. I was like, okay, that was deceptively challenging. Um, so I'm really, really satisfied with it in terms of how difficult it was. Uh, the stages were legit, man. There's different classes that you can run. Anybody can go do this event. Anybody can. I mean, you may you may totally suck it up, but there's different classes. There's an intermediate, there's a tactical, and then there's an elite division. And then there's also a team division if you wanted to do that. So it's accessible to anybody. Um, the number one question I get about this competition is, well, how does this compare to, like, tactical shooting or combat shooting? How does it compare to your, you know, the stuff you would do in in the in military, like military training, stuff like that? 
It's it's not it is not that, man. It's not there's no tactics involved, okay? I know it's called the tactical game. You think it's misnamed? No, I don't I don't think it's misnamed. I I I don't I I, I don't have any problem with the name. Um but it's a it's competition shooting. Yeah. Which is totally different than combat shooting where every decision you're making is based off of what can I do best to keep myself alive in this situation? When you're shooting competition, it's more of like, how do I get th- through this the fastest and the most efficiently? Because you're being timed, right? Uh, so it, it's, it's, not, it's not tactics, man. That being said, is there training value in that? Well, yeah, because even though it's not testing you on tactics, and what are we talking about tactics here? I'm talking about like like if you're standing behind a barricade and you're engaging a target with your rifle. If your rifle malfunctions or goes dry, tactically, what you would do is you would step back behind the barricade and immediately draw your pistol. And hopefully you would have a teammate behind you to bump you out so that he could get a rifle back up online. And once you got bumped out, then you would holster your pistol, get your rifle back up, fix the malfunction or reload it, whatever whatever you needed to do to address the problem. So, like, that's tactics. Like, what do I need to do in this situation? If something goes wrong, what do I do to keep myself alive? So you think if your rifle goes dry, well, the first thing I need to do is get another gun in my hand. And while I'm doing that, I need to take one step back behind this cover so that I can make this transition and get another gun in my hand behind the cover. Well, when you're shooting competition, none of that comes into play. You're, you're low, you're, none of those tactical thinking stuff comes into play. It's just the stage is what it is. The loadout in the magazine is what it is, and you're just you just you're going through it the way it's prescribed. Um, but is there training value in it? Well, heck yeah, there's a ton of training value in it. I mean, most of y'all stinking civilians, you're never gonna get. I'm a civilian now. What? A, I'm sorry, I called you a stinking civilian. Um, <laughs> hey, most of you guys aren't career civilians. Like, yeah, you're you're net dude. You're never, like, for you to get proficient at tactics, like, really proficient, it's like a, that's a lifetime of dedicated training and study. Like, don't think you're going to get good. You might learn some, you know, basic tactics, right? But even then, you have to drill them thousands of times to, for it to become muscle memory. So the training value from an event like the tactical games, one, you're really putting your weapon systems through the paces. So your rifle, for instance, we took shots there for anywhere from 25 yards to 600 yards. I mean, how many of you guys get get out and, and shoot your rifle under, under pressure and time at 600 yards, man? So you're really you really get to learn the capability of your weapon systems and are your optics working and do you have the gun set up the way, you know, the the most efficient way it can be set up for, for the competition. Um, another big thing, training value, you get practice shooting, uh, and, and precision shooting, by the way, all of the shooting at the tactical games, you're shooting at daggone targets, the size of the top of that cup right there. So, you, it's it's all precision shooting. And so you get to practice shooting really accurate shots while you're literally sucking wind. You're out of breath. You're breathing hard. Your heart rate's jacked. Your forearms are tired. And it forces you to either shoot terribly or to calm yourself down and take good, accurate shots. So there's a lot of training value in that, man. There's a lot of training value in that. Um, another thing, it tests it tests your gear, right? Uh, your your not just your weapon systems, but 
your body arm, your plate carrier, your gun belt. Uh, you know, do you got crap? Do you, do you look like me on the range? The last time me and Blake did a competition together and you got freaking mags falling out and the wrong holster and all of that stuff, right? You, it, this tactical games, man, your mess better be wired tight, son. Are you going to look like a freaking yard sale out there? So there's a lot of training value from it. Um, it's not so, so it is competitive competition shooting but don't think that because it is competition shooting don't think that there aren't aspects of that that are going to translate and make you a better and more effective gunfighter if you ever did find yourself uh, in a gunfight in real life right uh so it's good stuff man i freaking loved it I loved it. I'm 100% going back to uh, to do this again. And, yeah, I got a lot of work to do. I learned so much about my gear, learned so much about what I need to work on physically, um, where I need to get stronger, uh, where I need to slow down and shoot better. Like, ev- I learned so much about uh, what I need to improve in order to go back to this thing and actually be competitive. So it was a fun competition, man. I highly recommend it if you guys enjoy shooting. And even if you're not that fit right now, just go sign up for the intermediate thing and just go out and do what you can do, man. Do what you can do. Like, I, I fully, I full, I, I did not expect to do well this weekend because the only way that you can get better at something is you have to just go out and do it and suck for a little bit. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, man, but I, I mean, there are some people out there who might gather all the intel and who might put together some precise training plan and show up to something for the first time and just crush it. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But that's not the way I work. I like to learn through experience, which means you have to be okay with sucking the first time or two that you do something. Like, I'll never forget the first time I ran an ultra marathon, a 50 miler. I don't do, I don't do all that research, man. (laughs) I'm just like, this sounds awesome. I think it's going to be hard. I went and signed up for this 50 mile race. Never even heard of anything like that before. Didn't even know it was humanly possible to run 50 miles. Went and did this race. If I mean, did terrible. I did terrible. I mean, I dude, I could barely daggone move the next day. It was awful. So I sucked. But then the next time I didn't suck quite as bad. The next I was learning. Every time I did it, I was learning. So you got to be okay with that, man. Not only do you have to be okay with that. But you should actually enjoy that process. And I think this holds so many people back. People are afraid to suck. They really are. Like, it it holds them back from ever just going to do anything, man. I mean, I finished eighth place. Out of 27 people, eighth place. That's pretty sucky. All right? And I'm... I, I expected that, but it's awesome because now I know what to work on, and hopefully when we go back this summer, we'll finish second, third, maybe first place. Just do it, man, if, if you think it's going to be something you enjoy. So, yeah, Blake, you're going to love this crap, dude. Yeah, I'm looking forward to being able to do one. Maybe I'll be able to go to the – Next one, is it in June or something? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. If Blake goes, uh, there's probably no chance that I'm going to be able to win (laughs) because he's going to, he's going to, he, he is going to love this crap. He's so meticulous, dude. Well, yeah, but Blake has a better personality for this type of a competition. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he's going to approach it. In a, in a way that's going to be more conducive to having success, especially, especially on his right first run. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
So yeah. that won't be pretty, but but yeah, that, guys, be fun. Don't don't. I mean, what what I what I'm trying to tell you, if if you're not if you're not even interested in it, maybe you don't do any shooting or you know you're not interested in that. Like what I'm trying to tell you is, don't just pigeonhole yourself into doing the same dang thing for your whole life. Think of things that you can do that are going to force you to, I, I, I used the word this morning, like reinvent yourself, like improve, think about what you can change, what you need to change. Um, all of that's good stuff. But, you know, so many of us, including, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, so many of us, you know, we want to just stick with the same thing. We stick with the same thing for way too long. It's like you can try new stuff. It's actually going to be good for you. Just do it, right? Yeah, that's an interesting line because depending on who you're talking to and what their story is, you'll find many people who get to their maybe their 40s or 50s or 60s, whenever the, the point is it hits them in their life and they go, man, I've never stuck with something for long enough to actually yeah. see myself get, you know, really good at it and have success with it. And man, I, I, I did, you know, I just bounced around so many times, did this for two years and then that for two years. And then that I never really, you know, so I think that's, a yeah, it could, it could potentially be bad advice for people like that. Right. It, it just depends, man. It, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's situational. I guarantee you, you've got people hearing that, that, they're sitting there thinking, yeah, I wish I had, you know, stuck with something for longer just to actually see what I could have made out of it. So it's, I think it's just dependent it, on the situation and the individual. But I definitely think that what you're saying applies to many as well because it, it, it really, I think, comes down to your goals or, or what is being achieved maybe because when you just stick with the same thing that you don't even care about and you're not, improving and it's not challenging in you in any way and not just because the progress halts but yeah progress just stops and you're not you it's just literally the same thing because yeah. you can stick with the same you can stick with you know weightlifting or running or, or whatever the thing is but it be different over time and continue to challenge you in different ways but if that stops then yeah you probably should move on yeah yeah exactly Exactly, man. Yeah, like like for me, for running, for instance, like, well, I could decide I wanted to, like, do a real fast marathon. Yeah. Or something. That would and, be, and, that was running, but it would be different. It, but it would be totally different. Exactly. That's, that's right. So, yeah, that's, that, that can work too. Um, but yeah, for me, I guess, the, I guess for me, I'm talking about, I, I do this like for, the sake of my own enjoyment like it's it it excites me it reinvigorates me um it it challenges me uh to to you know try new things and and i'm not scared to do it i'm not scared to suck you know it is what it is i fully ex if i don't if i do something new and i don't go suck the first time well it probably wasn't hard enough like i probably picked something that was that was too easy so um we got any questions about any of this in the chat blake well not ones that couldn't find by a simple google search but they're asking like where <laughs> where is it um <laughs> Yeah, we'll let you guys uh we'll let you guys Google that. Yeah, no, nothing. Nothing. Oh, well that, that well that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube. So so particularly about the divisions, you did the tactical one, right? Intermediate, yeah. tactical, and expert. Other than the obvious of strength or, you know, endurance and level of shooting, do you think that was the right division for you to be in? I would assume a lot of the people expected you to be in the expert division. Yeah, yeah. Quite a few people asked me, you know, what what you know, expecting that. Yeah. But no, the tactical division was the was the right division for me to be in. Because like I said, even like 
I, you have when you when you're trained to shoot the way that I was trained to shoot in the military. Like you're having to rewire a lot of that to be able to shoot the competition. So I'm really starting out in this more co competitive style of shooting. I'm starting out at a fairly low baseline because you know again you're having to rewire a bunch of a bunch of stuff that you you would norm how you would normally react or what you would normally do, and you're having to do it the way they want you to do it for the sake of the competition well even just something as simple as the red dot or as basic yeah. as the red dot i mean you don't it's like well yeah you got years and years of experience shooting i mean how how many years your whole life well how many times have you shot with the red dot before a few months ago very little no never 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 well there you go i mean that that right there ought to be enough to you, you realize how maybe simple that is but significant you know yeah yeah no that was the right division and next time i go back I'll, i i won't i won't go up to that that elite division until i win a competition in the tactical division I got and once i win one there then i'll think about going up to the elite division um mr joker asked did it affect your confidence coming in seventh being you're a decorated seal <laughs> no it did not it didn't it didn't affect my confidence at all i mean like i said i'm i'm that's where i fully expected to be was i, I expected to be right around the middle of the pack right and it goes back to the we already had that conversation it's this is not combat oriented shooting this is competition yeah i mean i, I think you could take those those competition shooters like you see on youtube holy crap dude have <laughs> hey, you seen them oh yeah I mean, you could take, I mean, go, yeah, like take any active duty, recently retired military service member in existence and they're not going to outshoot those. It's a, t I mean, yes, it, it's gun and gun shooting and shooting. It's two totally different things, man. I, yeah. I watched some of those guys yeah. shooting those three gun competitions and oh yeah, whatever USPSA <laughs> oh, or whatever matches. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, there ain't nobody. There ain't nobody. Those well, guys are best well, in the world, man. You know what it is, too? It's like if me and you, you me, whoever, raced Usain Bolt in a, a marathon. Well, we're going to beat him very easily. Well, are you going to ask him, hey, man, do you feel bad being you're a nine-time gold medalist Olympian runner and you lost to this idiot on the yeah, street? Yeah, He's going to go, uh, no. Because yeah, we were running, but it was twenty six miles. Mm -hmm. Like it's two totally different things. But I don't. I think sometimes you can't understand that. Yeah, it's hard that. to compute that for sure. Yeah. Did you wear gloves during the competition? Robert Lee wants to know. No, I did not wear gloves, and I wouldn't recommend wearing gloves either. Nothing we did required gloves. I never even thought that it. I, like there was never a moment where I was like, "Man, I wish I had a pair of gloves." No. Nah. <clears throat> so that was my experience at the tactical games highly recommend it that's what i wanted to uh share with the viewers today well i got a question What's about up? the event so you said it was well ran at the beginning and you liked you liked how it was what I don't even, all I can compare it to is, is some sort of a, a race just because that's all I know. But what, what do you think you would improve about it? I mean, what, what is, what, what, what makes that, what makes it good? What makes a shooting work? I mean, cause it's a combining working out and shooting like it, what makes that good, a good event, a good setup, just, just the workouts they pick for you, like the, the program or no, it's to, to me, it's the same as a, to me, it's the same thing that makes an ultra marathon. Good. Okay. Yeah. The volunteers, everything. Yeah. Um, the, the people that are working, just the attitudes of, of the people who are associated with the event. Um, the, uh, the time, them sticking to their timelines, yeah. uh, having things organized to where there's a good flow. All of that. Not a crap show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you're not like, holy crap, man. Like, really? You're two hours behind yeah. on this? Or really, you freaking scored my target wrong <laughs> 50 times? Yeah. 
well, the short clips I saw, it looked different than I expected. And, you know, I think they probably, they took safety pretty, pretty serious. And yeah, they're on a cold range. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cold range, which yeah. means unless you're on the line, actually shooting yeah. the target out there, the weapons unloaded. So that's a, that's another big difference between, you know, combat shooting or competition shooting. Well, your, your weapon's going to be hot. If you're combat shooting, you're going to, weapon's going to be hot. You're going to be moving in all different directions and all this stuff with that. It's very controlled. Everything is only facing the targets and it has to be that way for sure. But yeah, it was very safe. Very, yeah. Safety. That was another thing that made it a great event. It was ran clean, safe. You could just tell people cared, man. What would I change about it? Well, I mean, the big thing for me would be the the one thing I would change about it would just be something to play to my advantage. Yeah. And it would be that uh, I wish the stages were longer. Like, you know, instead of an eight-minute long workout, if it would have been a 30- or 40-minute long workout where we really got to get in the, you know, into that grind mode. Yeah. You know, you think it favors physical fitness versus precision shooting or the other way around, like which, which would be weighted more heavily. I think as, far as winning, well, I think it's as close to being evenly weighted as it possibly could be. That's, that's pretty cool. It that, is that's cool. gotta be hard to do. Yeah. To structure it, something that way. I know, man, to be able to set the points up, you know, the point system up to where it doesn't just, fa you can't, you couldn't go out there and just be a physical stud and be a poor shooter like you couldn't make up for your poor shooting with any amount of physical ability um so yeah i think it's to me in my opinion it's weighted about as closely as it could be because that's like i was watching my friend my friend i told you guys about at the beginning of the conversation he won the whole thing in the elite division this guy man he's unbelievable well, you know, I would watch him in some, on some of his stages, and he wouldn't finish first every time, you know, in the in the stage. There'd be he'd finish second or third, like he was close enough to the front. He wasn't middle of the pack. He was close to the front, but he wouldn't always finish first. But his shooting was better than the one or two guys that finished ahead of him. And he just was that way consistently yep. all weekend, consistently. And that's how, you know, that's how he won. Whereas me, I would have an event. I would have a stage where I would finish second or third overall. And then I'd have a stage, you know, two hours later where I finished 15th, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and then I'd have yeah. another one where I did real good. And then I'd have another one where I sucked. So if you're just consistently good physically, and with your your accuracy throughout the weekend, you don't ever really have to finish a stage first um, to actually win the whole thing. So, yeah, it's really awesome how they balance that out. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. I'm just hoping baby Blake is uh, healthy enough to go out there and get after it. Yeah, I'll say, um, I mean, you know, many times in my life I've – um, signed up and wanted to do things, and then I just don't end up being able to do them for whatever reason. I mean, even that I was supposed to run that um, 10k was it Lookout Mountain 50 miler you did, Chad? And uh, we had Blakely up there, and she ended up getting sick as our first kid, and she was real young, and she I think it was that roseola virus or whatever. But I was like, dang, here we are, you know, away from home, and we might have taken the doctor, so I didn't go. and I was just thinking about that stuff, you know, this weekend because it really sucks that I didn't get to go. And, um, you know, I mean, it was something I wanted to do and spent weeks training for. And, um, but, you know, it just brings, um, to me, always brings light to the, that the stuff, you know, that we have and that we hold on to here, it really, it can all be taken away just, you know, at overnight, really. <laughs> So the things you want to do, like, yeah, you should want to do them. You should train for them. But when they get taken away, it don't mean you're not going to you feel bad about it uh, or, you know, you're going to be a little bit upset about it, but it, it's not going to crush you. And um, I was reading 
this week and this um this verse I think explains it well. Second Corinthians four eight through probably twelve, but it says uh, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about the body that, uh, always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. And it just made me think, like we experience um, being hard pressed. We experienced, we experienced being, uh, dis, you know, in despair, persecuted uh struck down all of those things but we're not to the extreme of them we're not crushed we're not destroyed and really how you act in those times is the best way that you can show hope to people because when things are good and you go like hey i trained for the tactical games i went and shot it was a lot of fun they're like cool oh that's cool and it inspires me to do stuff that's good too but then when people know like man you really wanted to do this you worked hard at it, you know, the last week you weren't able to do it. And how does, how do you, how do you respond then? And the way that you respond, do you just walk around poopy pants? Woe is me. And you know, like this sucks and crying about it. Or do you carry on with hope? Um, and I hope that that shows hope to people. And it just made me think that like, that's how, that's how you, that's how you should act. And that's how you should show hope. And this verse really, really, um, explained it out well to me so that's something I, that's what i was thinking about this week because i mean i did want to go but as i you know through prayer and reading and things like that that's where i landed with it so that's what i'd share about the tactical games <laughs> yeah that's good stuff man that's good stuff yeah hoist was a hoist is a big presence out there they actually sponsor one of the elite females her name's Smokey the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Hey man, she's stout, dude. But she had a hoist, she had a hoist patch on her uh on her kit. Really? Can't believe Hoist didn't send me a patch to put on my kit, man. Oh, I definitely think they have in the past. Well, maybe they have, <laughs> yeah. but I I, I I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, you kind of lose things. They need to send things right at the exact moment that you're ready to put them on something. If not, it's just a waste. Mm -hmm. He'll lose it. That's how it is. I'll tell you what, hoist is the perfect drink for getting after it down in the florida heat especially right in the beginning of the spring you're not used to the heat just sweating your freaking butt off <laughs> hoist is the perfect hydration supplement to take with you at the tactical games especially this black bottle man that's kind of i mean tactical, that looks tactical is that your favorite that's black, the black cherry? cherry no no, that no ain't that's, your not, favorite. that's not my favorite i like that uh that orange one up there yeah, what is that? Blaze orange or peach no, mango? The peach mango. Peach mango. Yeah. Yeah. That one's good cold. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Um, yeah. If you haven't tried hoist, you should go check them out. Drinkhoist.com. Jokers will keep you going, man. It hydrates better than water. It's got everything your body needs from calcium, potassium, magnesium. It's even got a little bit of carbs in it, 14 grams of carbs. 70 calories, taste amazing. Summer's coming, man. Keep yourself hydrated. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, don't be like Cornbread. <laughs> when he saw what he saw, got immediately dehydrated. You know what I'm talking about, Chili. Yeah, he drank a whole case. Yeah, he drank a whole case of hoist. <laughs> he, he had to get a whole case to get him back on line. Yeah. Caught the vertigo. If you get dehydrated, man, you ain't going nowhere. And yeah, if you can find that patch, you can put it on your vest, but they don't need to worry about you losing that because Chad loses $100 bills all the time. Y'all know he's so rich. Plus he ain't broke. <laughs> he ain't broke. Hey, man, Hoist is battlefield tested, warfighter approved, clinically proven to hydrate 110% better than water. No preservatives. Sweetened with real cane sugar. That's well, you stuff, can't beat man. that cane sugar. Bro. No. Mm -mm. I had a tick bite. And I rub some hoist on it, hydrated it right up. You remember when you was eating that <laughs> bowl of chili and you took that sip of that hoist? What did you say? I don't remember. Well, that, that stuff is good. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? Oh, man, that's good. That bump. <laughs> <sighs> you don't remember that? Uh-uh. 
<laughs> well, boys, anything else to discuss today? Is that all you wanted to cover? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really too fired up about politics today. Um, I'm well, just kind, of, I'm just kind of like, screw it. It's a good day because the coffee shop didn't mess up your coffee. The warranty company's paying for the transmission on the. Suburban. Oh yeah, how about that? All you guys that con that commented on the live stream the other day that we were stupid for buying the freaking extra warranty. Well, they're paying for the dang transmission. Yep. So put that in your freaking pipe and smoke it, man. Yep. Uh, and then last week we got cut off prematurely. What was that from? Oh, Chad put that sign, ripped the cord out of the plug, plug in yeah, over. Um, no, um, YouTube shut here. us down for talking about something. Yeah. What, what was, was we, we talking about? We started talking about something. I was it? about to talk. I was about to talk about hoist. I know, but we had just been talking about something and then. Ooh. YouTube shut us down, and everybody was saying, that's what you get for talking about that. It's a bloodbath, man. Oh, yeah, that's what, it, yeah. Maybe that was it, but. Yeah, and we were opening the sign, but we did that, didn't we? Yeah. What else was No, it? it's a bloodbath out there, dude. Yeah. That's just the way YouTube is. That call-in show yesterday was a bloodbath. Yeah. yeah, so all you that gave Super Chats last, uh, last week, we appreciate y'all. We didn't get to read them. Uh, Chad's going to show you here. We've got a. Oh, no. We ain't even close to needing to wrap this up. We hey, got about 20 no. more minutes worth of things to talk about. Blake, talk to Blake designed this shirt for us. Will you talk to the listeners about the um the meaning behind this shirt, Blake? Yeah. So that's our new shirt there. Uh, <laughs> David <laughs> yep, David Charbonnet is. helped me design that and so the meaning behind the shirt is in Ezekiel 37 you see at the bottom there it's got the got the book and chapter and in that chapter god takes ezekiel out uh through a vision hold on i have it right here i'll read it blake okay i'll have it right here okay the hand of the lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them around about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Yeah, so he goes out, he sees the big valley of dry bones, and you see God ask him, can these bones live? And obviously Ezekiel probably thought it looked pretty, uh, you know, maybe like that wasn't quite possible, but he still said, well, only you know, Lord. And so if you read on through there, he, God, he tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones and God brings them together bone to bone. And, uh, he puts lig ligaments or sinew and flesh back on the bones and then they still don't have life. And, and, uh, God tells them to prophesy in his name. Uh, they would have breath in their lungs and it fills them and they come back to life. And so it kind of represents, well, it does represent, um, this shirt here. I didn't want flesh. I didn't like want the complete picture. I wanted something that showed kind of the in-between stage because really that's where we're at most of our life, if not all of our life, because we don't ever arrive. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of showing dry bones that have came together to show a semblance of a man and that uh, muscles have began to be put on the body and, and tendons and ligaments and sinews, and they're able to move, and his hands are open. He's receiving what the Lord has for him, and you got the question there, can these bones live? And obviously they can. And so, um, yeah, that's the meaning behind the shirt. And, you know, there's a deeper meaning. We just recorded a YouTube video that we'll put out about Ezekiel 37. And some of you may have heard it here on the podcast, but that's the meaning behind the design and and what that scripture says. Yeah, there's been many a times in, in my life that I've looked at my own situation and said, good night. Uh, yeah, I feel like a sack of dry bones. I feel freaking just beat down and useless and ineffective and don't know what my purpose is, don't know what my direction is. And um, with the help of the Lord God, 
he has brought me back out of those places and uh and brought life back into my life and purpose and joy and fulfillment and hope uh back into my life many times and yeah this plays uh this chapter plays a big role into the the mission behind three of seven project obviously if you haven't noticed ezekiel 3 7 and um goes all the way back to the story of how 307 project was even started and so that's a it's just a really cool thing it's it's this design is special to us and um hopefully you guys understand the meaning behind it and uh blake will put out that more detailed video on youtube at some point this week so yeah, I hope it provides hope to people. You know, if, if you haven't read that story, go read it, that account uh, in Ezekiel 37, then go read it because it should give you hope and it should should show you that you're never too far gone, that, that there's you can't ever have done too many bad things, can't ever have gotten too fat, no matter how much Chad fat shames you. You can always move forward. You can start losing weight. You can start seeking the Lord. You can do all of those things and get a little bit better and every time you do it's just a, another bone piece put together another sinew added another muscle added flesh life breath all of those things and so yeah go check them out a well, lot boys well uh you two guys over there y'all were extremely boring today um do y'all have anything interesting to say look we won team pt and you've been mad all morning. We letting you do your thing. I ain't been mad all morning, man. You've been real subdued today yeah. on the podcast. You just wanted to kind of ease in, talk about the tactical games. What were we supposed to say, man? You're supposed to say something interesting, man. I mean, wow. nothing happened to you interesting while I was gone. I found out I don't. It's funny you talked about how you covered in bruises. I don't. After the games, I don't. I found out I don't bruise because you don't ever do anything to bruise yourself. No, no, I'm saying like you could you could just just pummel me right no, now buddy. with a but I don't bruise. You don't ever do anything to cause yourself to bruise. No, that ain't it. What is it? I, yeah, that's it. I have a genetic defect, I believe, but it works out to be. Is that that carpal one we some about? No. Oh. No, that's different. It's one of his many ailments. No, this ain't an ailment, though. See, really, this produces a positive result. Okay. We'll see. No, I don't bruise, man. Well, we did have some super chats. Ain't that wild? Come in. Yeah, it's, I can't believe people give their hard-earned money. Well, no, not that. I meant me not bruising. We have Bo Diddley. He coming in at 10 bucks. Thank you, Bo. Isn't that what what y'all name y'all's turkey? Boo Radley. Boo. Oh, that's close. He Thank said, you, working on buying 30 acres outside of Somerville. Y'all welcome to come turkey and deer hunt yep. when I land the deal. <laughs> Dang, I appreciate boy. 307 Project. Nice, man. Thanks, Bo. Jesse Pace gave a dollar ninety nine. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. Ariel Shen gave sixty new Taiwan dollars. Good lord. Oh, dang. Yeah. Ariel. Taiwan, Taiwan dollars. That's our first new new Taiwan Very dollars. New Taiwan. NT. That is outstanding. We got Cody Oscar David coming in at 10 bucks. Big love popping in on lunch trying to get Rop ready. I was just, I was yeah. just about to say he better be hiking, son. Yep. See you soon. Let me, before you move on, the Rop courses. Very little I wanted to talk about, but I did want to say we've got one course left on the website right now, September. I want to remind you, go ahead and start sending in your applications if you're interested in that. We also may have a spot or two in July. We'll see. If you if you apply and you're good with that date too, just mention that. Thank you. Thank you for that word, Jilly. We also had Nikki Lynn coming in at a dollar ninety nine. Right on, brothers. Keep on keeping on. That's Nikki. Yep, Nikki, Nikki Lynn. Lynn. Didn't we talk to a Nikki last night on the live call? Colorado. Show? Yeah, Nikki from Colorado. We had a little Virgil coming in at $1.99. <laughs> LV. Thank you, LV. Garrick coming in at $19.99. Grief, Garrick. 
Thank you, Garrick. Gatekeeper PVVQ dollar ninety nine. Chad, do you have do you have fake imposters on Facebook? Yes, he does. He has them all over. Yes, there are many fake me's out there. And if you can't tell the difference, well, there's your sign. Yeah. You just know that if I ever reach out to you via the internet, it's not me. <laughs> All right. Just know that. We had um, Dorinda Brown coming in at 1999. Thank you for making a podcast that my 11 year old son enjoys listening to. I think it's because the word turd is used regularly, but that's okay. It's better to better content and it makes this mom and her son happy. Thank you, Dorinda. Thank you. Cody does Amazon coming in at nine ninety nine. That's $9 Cody McCarson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Cody. Yep. He said Thank appreciate you, you guys. We had muscled up runner Greer coming in at nine ninety nine. Thank y'all for being a pillar of goodness. It's because of y'all I have become closer to God. Love Thank you, you, muscled up runner. His work is never done. Brother. Garrett coming back in at 1999. <laughs> Dang, bone Garrett. by bone, I'm proof of that. It's never too late. Amen to that, awesome. brother. We just had Brett Ham coming in at 99.99. Good yeah. Lord, night, Brett. Yep, that's his first super chat. No My message. Word. No message. Man. Dang, we appreciate that, Brett. We appreciate y'all support, man. Ed B just come in at 4.99. <laughs> Ed B. Yeah, <laughs> nobody wants to let little Virgil beat them anymore. Brett Ham said, "Came upon this channel a few weeks or so back. This is something I can get behind." Oh, Gun Garage Tactical coming in at forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Good night. Just a new small business supporting what we and you believe in. Love what you guys are doing. Gun Garage Tactical. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much, brother. Yep. <sighs> Well, all right, guys. I'm going to uh I'm gonna go ahead and uh Ed B said use use this money to pay the tech guy to be on the next live call show. <laughs> Roger that. Roger that. I all think right. they like the beeps. I'm gonna spend the rest of the week kind of uh recuperating here. As you can tell, I'm a little beat down. Uh Blake, y'all don't ask me to do a bunch of crap this week, all right? Don't freaking farm me out and do all that. Look, man, y'all got to let the old bull just be on the pasture for a minute. We ain't asking you to do nothing this week, right? man. Steadily just farming me out for crap, man. Travis Van S coming in at four ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> he said, go eat some peeps. Go eat some peeps. That's what I'm talking about, boy. Easter peeps, son. This weekend. Oh, man. All right. Well, um. For the rest of you guys here today that helped me host the show, thank you guys for being boring. Uh, viewers, I will try to come up with some. Uh, that was on you. I'll try to come up with some better co hosts here. Maybe uh, in the next couple episodes, we'll see what happens. Maybe these guys will come back to life. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So we love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Enough said. <laughs>